Amen. So today, let's jump in. We're going to talk about law. And the thing about laws is laws are things that we use for protection, right? You know, when, when you're driving down the street and, and um, you see a speed limit sign, that sign is there to make sure that we're going a safe speed, right? Makes us think about right and wrong. You ever been riding down the road and you saw a police car? What's the first thing you did? You slow down. You look at your speedometer. Your heart started racing a little bit. You ain't done nothing, but you're like, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> Let me check myself, right? Those were, the, those were things that, that one of the things that laws do. It makes you check yourself, right? Makes you consider your ways. But we're talking about two separate laws today. There's a law of the land, and then there are laws of God. So we're going to talk about how, which one is the higher law. Because we live in a world where the law of the land has variation. And the law of God doesn't. Amen? So let's look at the word law. The word law, when we look at laws, law, the system of rules which a particular country or community recognizes. Right? So we're talking about a country or a community that choose to focus on a particular law. Right? Has regulated the actions of its members and which may enforce by the imposition, uh, imposition of penalties. So then again, we have another ambiguous word, right? It may be enforced. It may cause penalties. Law shape, shape the way we live and give, is, uh, and give a sense of right or wrong. We vote for laws. Uh, and uh, these are things that we we elect and put into place, right? So one thing that always intrigued me when I was little, and, and I don't know if you remember, but they taught us about how the government works, right? And they told us that, you know, they have political action committees, they have lobbyists. And one thing that made no sense to me is that to be in a political action committee or to be a lobbyist, you know, you got the attention of the person who, you, who they wanted in office. You got to put some influence on what you wanted them to speak about. They would pay uh, lump sums of money to devote to their campaign to get their agenda on the ticket, right? And so it almost made me say that political action committee ain't something I could just jump into. I don't have a lot of um, uh, money to influence somebody to speak on my behalf, right? We can change those laws based on how we vote, right? Laws can be changed. They're not always the same. Sometimes a law will be in place and it's something will be illegal. And over time, the same thing that was illegal years ago is now legal. We can break laws long enough so that they become legal laws. Let me give you an example. How many people remember or heard about the prohibition? Prohibition uh, was the prevention by law of the manufacture and sale of alcohol. Y'all heard about that? Al Capone running around shooting up things because people was selling alcohol on this turf and, and people making moonshine. How many of you, your, your relatives, we from the South now. <laughs> How many of our people that you know that made some moonshine back in the day, right? Right? So between 1920 and 1933, it was illegal to sell alcohol. But through all the crime, through all the illegal activity, through years of seeing things go wrong in society, they changed the law so that now alcohol can be sold. Let's bring it forward to the day. What about marijuana? All right? 
considered illegal in 1970. But if you look now, in 19 states, marijuana is illegal. I mean, legal, right? And other states are considering changing the law based on the desires of the people. See, our desires sometimes can have an effect on the law of the land, right? It can change the way our society thinks, the way we regulate ourselves and what we say is right or wrong. The laws of the land are dictated by the desire of the majority. How many of you ever heard, have heard the, the, the statement majority rules? Right? It's part of our democratic, democratic process, right? Majority rules. But what happens to the people who are not in the majority? Do they get what they want? Well, it seems sometimes unfair. Well, let's think about it this way. How many, how many have heard about the rich taxes and the poor taxes? Right? <laughs> you know, it seems like a little unfair, unbalanced. And I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it, but it just seems like when majority rules, there's always a portion of the people who are left out. Right? It doesn't necessarily cover everybody and everybody's desires and everybody's needs, everybody's wants. It's ever changing and open to being reinterpreted. Right? The laws of the land can always be interpreted. They can always look at it and say, well, this is what we thought it meant. This is what we felt like it meant 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 100 years ago. But then we have a Supreme Court that you can submit things to and they say, well, we're going to change the interpretation of this law. What it meant back then, we're going we're to change what it means today. Right? So let's look, uh, an example of that would be the, the law that governed our sexuality. Right? There were certain things that were allowed back in the day that are not allowed now. Right? There are certain viewpoints that have changed, and they're not the same as they were before. Laws about abortion rights, right? Some of the things that we're talking about today, whether it should or should not be done, they're up to the interpretation. We change them all the time, and we're fighting these causes all the time. And that's what the law of the land is. It brings a sense of ambiguity, confusion. Like you don't know exactly where you should stand. Because the law today could be changed tomorrow, right? And that's very important. Because there are some laws that we as believers should live by. And sometimes they might not go with the law of the land, right? Sometimes how, the very way that we believe threatens other people. Right? Especially when it comes to those subjects right there, sexuality, when it comes to abortion rights, the way that we believe sometimes and could change the law so that we are on the wrong side of the law. Right? Just because of how we believe. Let's talk about the laws of God. They're given by God with no vote. There's no voting on God's laws. Right? Because God is our creator and he created us. He's given us the laws that he knows works best for us. The thing about God's laws is they are for everybody, right? There's no respect of a person for these laws. So, just an example that you, you, you how many people heard of the Ten Commandments? And God gave us some laws, right? And so if you look up here, you'll see that God separated the laws. And the, like the first, I got some condensed ones. Matter of fact, can you go to the last slide, Shana? Very last slide. So he gave us 10, right? And this is the short condensed version of the 10. And so those first four. You should not, thou shalt have no other God before me. You shall not make idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. If you look at those laws, they're pointing to one thing. 
and pointing to your relationship with God. If you look at the remainder, excuse me, honor your father and your mother, should not murder, you should not commit adultery, you should not steal, you should not bear false witness, and you shall not covet. Those laws are talking about our relationship with other people. Right? There's something about God's laws that are true to every person. So I highlighted, go back to that slide, uh, number four. I highlighted the ones at the bottom, right? Because I wanted to bring something to your attention. You can go anywhere in the world, talk to anybody in the world, and they will generally agree with these laws, whether they believe in God or not. You can go to anybody in the world and say, should you respect your mom and dad? But they believe in God or not, they'll probably say, yeah. If you tell someone you should not murder, do you agree with that? They'll probably say, yeah, I shouldn't murder without a cause. Nobody should murder without a cause. Nobody should just be going around killing people, right? They say you should not commit adultery. I don't care if a man has 10, 11, 12 wives. If you, take one, if you say, can I have that one, he'll probably say no, right? You should not commit adultery. Uh, you should not steal. Where can you go in the world and somebody say, it's okay for you to steal from me? Where can you go in the world and say, hey, you should be, you should be able to lie against people. You should be able to bear false witness. Nowhere in the world. I don't care what they believe. You should not covet. Right? No hating on people, right? No looking at people and saying, I want what you got. I'm willing to take what you got, right? So those laws of God are for everybody. They're not specific to finances. They're not specific to position. They're not specific to uh, social status. They're the same for every person. And so when we're talking about these laws, and God assigning us these laws and giving us these laws, it's because he knows what's best for us. And so you'll run into people who will, who will say, well, God created all these things and, 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 and they're beautiful and they're wonderful. You can look outside and, and you'll see the trees and you see the sky. If you look inside and internally in the way our body is made, you can't deny that someone created this. You can't deny that a supreme being did all these things. Now, some people might deny it because they don't understand it. And because they can't understand it, they turn away from it. But the only reason that they don't understand is because they haven't catched on to the part where they have to make a relationship. They have to make a connection. How can the thing that is created know more than what created it. How can you know more about God than he knows about you? How will you know about God unless you establish a relationship? Then you'll start to see why things were created the way they are. Then you'll start to understand who you are. Then you'll start to understand the laws of God and why they exist the way they do and why you feel the way you feel when you break one of these laws or when you see one of these laws being broken or, or, or going against one of these laws, then you get, begin to understand. The understanding comes with relationship to God. And so you might say to yourself, all right, Andre, you're talking about these laws and, 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 and what they mean and, and the laws of the land versus the laws of God. But see, it's important that we hold on to the laws of God because these are the higher laws. So in Matthew 5, verse 21 through 20, 31, I put these laws here for a reason too because in these verses it still talks about the higher law. So if you remember in these scriptures here in Matthew 5, this is where Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and they're questioning him about his law. And they ask him, well, he's still letting them know. He's like, well, you say that a man should not 
commit adultery. That's the law of the land. Right? But then he says, I have a higher law. You should not even think on a woman to lust after her. Because you've already committed adultery in your heart. This is where he says, you say a man should not commit murder. And then he says, but I, there's a higher law. Right? There's a, another law that says for you to hate somebody. You've already committed murder in your heart. So the higher law is not the act, but the higher law is the thought. It's where you convict yourself at the thought. It's where you think about those things that you should and shouldn't do at the thought, right? That's the higher law. That's the election that we should choose because the laws of the land can change. Because within those Ten Commandments that were shown, there's a whole bunch of stuff in between. Somebody say read between the lines. Oh, man, there's a lot of stuff in between those lines. Some of the things God put there and the prophets put there, some of the things the Pharisees, they added on to the end, they're subject to influence. They're subject to change. They're subject to our desires. And because they're subject to our desires, we'd be confused trying to figure them all out. Can somebody say shortcut? Can somebody say shortcut? Say shortcut. I like shortcuts. See, a shortcut came in the New Testament. It came with, with Jesus, right? See, if you remember what I said at the beginning, how those laws are broken up. And if you'll turn in your Bibles to Matthew 22, 34 and 30. And I'll read it here, and it's up on the screen as well. It reads, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, silenced them. The Pharisees got together, one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with his question, with this question, teacher, which is the greatest commandments in the law? They were trying to test him. He already shut him up one time. He's going to shut him up again. Watch this. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. How many? Two. So he gave them the, the cliff note version. Y'all remember in school where you wanted always to be able to condense all that material? and Just give me the short version, right? Give me something I can understand and I can comprehend. You got all this stuff that's going to be on this test, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to cram it all in one night. So Jesus said, I got a shortcut for you. If you want to understand all those laws, I wrap it up into. If you take that, uh, the list of those laws, the first one, the first set were your relationship with God, love God, and then the remainder is your relationship with people, love people. So when we talk about the laws of the land, and how they relate to what we do and who we are. These laws right here, they're not respect to a person. These laws right here are not influenced by our desire. They stay the same. Nothing will change them. Nothing will change their effect. Nothing will change their power. These laws right here are consistent through time. They were consistent at the beginning as it existed in the Ten Commandments and there is in their uh, consistent right now through the words of Jesus Christ. And they will be remaining the same forever. And you might ask yourself, well, how am I supposed to apply this? What am I supposed to do with these laws? How do I make sure I live by these laws? Right? Because when it comes to the people of the world and, and, and the laws of the land, those laws are so heavy. And they burden people so much. Those laws can't be followed to a T. Right? Those laws bring shame. Those laws bring guilt. But the law of 
Christ and the law of God brings freedom and liberty. So you have the liberty to love. You have the liberty to forgive. It brings freedom to do those things, to not be burdened down with them, to not hold people to things. It gives you the liberty to lift your hands and praise your God and acknowledge who he is. It gives you liberty to say, hey, I'm cared for by God. I know who he is. I know what he's done. It gives you peace to know that I don't have to hold on to unforgiveness. Right? I don't have to hold on to whether there's a penalty or not. Because I can hold on to the fact that I'm forgiven. I can hold on to the fact that I can forgive, that I can release people. See, the law of God, two things. You know how, many, how big a law book is that people go to the school and study? I had one. I was the introductory class. My book was this thick. Introductory law. But Jesus sums it up in two. Man. So let's talk about how we put those things into practice. So I looked at Matthew 10, Matthew 10, 16, and thir through 33 is what I put here. I encourage you to read those scriptures because it talks a little bit about what I talked about, especially when it comes to what's legal now may not be legal then. This is when Jesus is talking to the disciples and he's telling them to go out. This is the first time when he's telling them not to talk to anyone who not, who's not of the house of the Jews. And he's letting them know that you're going to come across some things. You're going to be brought before kings and queens. You're going to be brought before rulers of this world. And guess what? Their laws will not match your law. Their laws will not match your law of love. Loving God and loving people. See, of those laws, there is no law really that can stand against it. Nothing can say how much I can love you. Nothing can tell me how much I can love you. Nothing can say how much I can do for you, how much I can pray for you, how much I can forgive you, how much I can support you. There's no law against that. Right? There's no law against me being able to worship. There's no law that can stop me from worshiping God. No law that can stop me from lifting my hands and praising God. No law that can stop me from loving his word and loving who he is. Right? But the laws of the land just say different. Just like it did with Daniel. Just like it did with the disciples. But the question is, which law will you choose? Which law will you elect? Will you elect the higher law? Or will the laws of the land Say, hey, this is how everything is going, so I need to walk this way because I don't want to get in trouble. I got to walk the way that the laws of the land are taking me because they might throw me in jail. The ways of the law of the land may not agree with what your laws that God has given you and, and ask you to walk in and ask you to go in. We have to stand firm on the laws of God that we love people, and that we love God. So in Matthew 10, 16, it, holds, it reads, Behold, I send you forth as sheep amidst the wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So what I'm saying is, it's not that we don't have difficult conversations. It's not that we don't tell people what we believe and why we believe it. But we still do it in a harmless way. We still do it wisely. We should still do it with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. There may be some difficult conversations that have to take place. But people may ask you why you believe what you believe. All right? There's some things that's changing around us. How many have seen the progression of things that we see on TV changing, right? The suggestions of things that are being played. Those same suggestions, those things, you see it all the time. And some of those things are being written in the law. Something that surprised me the other day, and you got to be careful. I watched this show, these period pieces. And in these period pieces, they are now, what they used to just suggest, 
they now show on TV. And I'm talking about where they take an older guy and match him with an underage girl. Because it's a period piece, they make it seem like it's okay. Right? Because it's a period piece, they make it seem like that's all right. How many know it's not all right with us that those things happen? And just like those images come about your sexuality, those same images are now coming about the underage and pedophilia. Those things are happening. And they're putting images on our screen. And those things are changing in our laws. Some states are reducing the age at which people are legal or considered consent. So the laws of the land may change, but our laws will remain the same. Our beliefs and our thoughts will stay the same. Our values will stay the same. So how do we address those when we come into those, in contact with those? We are wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Amen? Man, I got another scripture for you. Ephesians 4, 11 through 15. And God gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come together in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. I bold that, because that to me is saying that laws change. With every wind of doctrine, we're no longer tossed to and fro. With anything that changes because it was legal back then, and now it's not legal anymore. It was illegal back then. And now it's legal now. We're no longer tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, with everything that comes our way, by the slight of men, right? By the desires of men based on their status or based on what they believe or where they're coming from or the money that they have, they're able to do with craftiness, get laws and get things changed to their favor, to where the majority rules. whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things, which is the head of the church. See, what I wanted us to see is it's us first. We've got to teach people how to observe the laws of God. We've got to show them that it's a better way. We've got to show them that by following God's law of love, loving God and loving people, that this way is better than the way that they're doing. It's by showing, it's by living, it, right? And we start here amongst each other, right? We start with our own brothers and sisters of where we really showing, right? Because how else will people come in if we don't show it amongst each other? How can we show it to others if we're not showing it to our own brothers and sisters? We're not showing it to the people who we see every day and we come and commune with all the time. How can we hate each other and, and then show other people, yeah, come on, you need love. Because you're over here talking about the people that you, that you, that you worship with, <laughs> right? So it's, it's on us first. So on us first to be to speak the truth in love, not just amongst not just amongst everybody out there, but amongst ourselves as well. Because that's how you're going to gain people. You're not going to gain anybody from going out there telling them they're wrong. But sometimes we do that, right? We speak the truth, but it ain't in love, right? We will speak the truth because I got the feeling to say, and I'm right, and we'll use the scripture sometimes to do it, right? Because I know I'm right in the scripture. I can't wait to prove you wrong. I can't wait to, I can't wait till I see him again. Oh, I done found this scripture. I done learned this in Bible study. I can't wait to tell them, nah, you ain't right. 
according to. Now beat that. You speak the truth, but it's not in love. And sometimes speaking the truth in love ain't always pretty. It ain't always a pleasant conversation. And oh yes, I love you so much. And oh man, this is this is so great. You know, I just want you to know. Sometimes it may be a hard conversation, but it's still in love. That's the difference. It's not a it's not a, a speaking the truth to to hurt somebody or to make them feel bad or to condemn them for what they were thinking or what they believe. But to speak in the truth and love so they will come to the true knowledge of God and the knowledge of Christ. So we got to speak the truth and love. All right. So understanding God's law and understanding man's law and where that puts us in the balance. We always have to make sure that we're following the law that never changes, that stays the same. So people know where to put you. Right? Mama Joan never changed. Because she's following God's law. Arlene don't change in how she do things. It's not right this when she does it and wrong when somebody else does it. Right? Because the laws that she follows stays the same. It's consistent. We've got to know in our heart of hearts that what God has given us is true and that it works. And then show it amongst ourselves. Amen? Amen. So I say to anybody watching, to anybody here, if, if you desire to know these laws, if you desire to elect God's laws over man's laws. Because you want to know what it is to have a relationship with God. And you want to know what it is to have something that's consistent, something that you can truly stand on. If you want to know what it is to love a creator who has given you laws that are not majority rules, that are not designed so that the rich get richer and the poor get poor. That are not designed based on your status. That are based on um, where you stand in society, what influence or power you have. I invite you to a relationship with God. I invite you with, to a relationship with Christ. I'm going to say a prayer. It's not a prayer of salvation, but it's a prayer of election. And so I ask that everyone pray with me for this prayer of election for his God and God's laws. Amen? Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for who you are, Lord God. We thank you that you are supreme, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the Lord of all, Lord God. That nothing is above you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you assign to us what we need. That the decision of how we live our lives is not in our hands, Lord, so that we would mess them up. But that you've given us, Lord God, because you know us better than we know ourselves, Lord. Because you love us, Lord God, more than we could ever comprehend. So that we, Lord God, can have a better, fulfilled, and strong relationship with you. So that we know who you are, Lord God, and we know who we are in you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your laws, Lord God. We thank you for breaking it down to us, Lord God. We thank you for making it simple. Lord God, keep us. Continue to watch over us, Lord God. Thank you for your protection, Lord God. Give us wisdom and knowledge, Lord God, and when we talk to any man, Lord God, that we acknowledge your laws, Lord God, that we acknowledge your way, Lord God, that we do not waver, Lord God, but we stand firm, Lord, on what you have given us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.